G'day guys, James here. Today in this video, I'm gonna show you how to install these double sliding cavity door units. And then tomorrow, what you're gonna see is this go in, in an office where they're trying to close in a space. So what you see in the video is all the tips, all the tools and all the tricks you need to do this installation. But first of all, I'll show you what we've got here. We've got the two single actual cavity frames that come themselves, two doors. These doors can be custom made pretty much any size you want up to about two meters wide, up to about three meters high. You've also got the head unit, which I'll pull apart and show you how that goes on. And then inside that, come with the box with all the tracks, mechanisms, sliding rollers and everything else you need to put on the door. Now, as we go and put it into this project, I'll show you how the doors have been routed out and where all the equipment and all the stuff goes into it. So stay tuned guys, we'll get all this packed up in the trailer and then start installing. Prior to getting started, you'll see on the back here, there's a little installation guide. Just scan the QR code up here and then it'll give you all the details for the installation. Okay, so this is our project. Basically, this is my customer's office. And because this is one big opening, it didn't offer much privacy or any sort of acoustics from sound. You can see in the back there, all they had was that little slide across screen. So the whole idea now is to put these double cavities on each side, build it all in, re-plaster the wall and have it all finished so it looks seamless like those doors were supposed to be there. Okay, so I'm just gonna start by stripping the cornice off on this side to make room for our framework. And I'll take off all the skirtings and architraves that might be in the way. Disconnect some of the light points and then start building our frame into position and mark out where our sliders are gonna go. So the good thing now is that exposes our frame. It's gonna be a little bit tricky cutting it all out. But basically this is where our cavity slider is going to sit into. Same on the opposite wall there once I strip that side of the plaster. All right, so good news that inside frame here is actually not load bearing. I wasn't sure until I actually pulled part of that wall out to take a look whether the joists were running across and sitting on this wall. But it actually turns out that they're running from the front of the house to the back of the house. The next thing I do is frame up for the new opening size of these two sliders. So I'm gonna put that headpiece in and drop two studs down each side. I'm gonna pack the bottom and then check everything for level and square. Once that's in position, then I can build the cavity frames in place. So once that's all screwed together, basically there's some screw holes in the top here and there's some screw holes at the base here that will hold it nice and rigid. So what I wanna do is add 10 millimeters clearance on each side of the frame. So if that's uh, 2870, we'll make it overall frame width 2890. So basically in the, each cavity, you'll get a box like this. You've got the one extra roller, which we're gonna put in the track in a second. You've got these two plates that attach to the top of the door. And then you've got these two hanging bolts that actually go from the top of that plate into your roller which then the door basically hangs from. There's a roller like this here, attached to what they call a soft close. Now when I push that, you'll see that it'll go up along the track here. And when it gets to this end, it stops with a soft close. So the second wheel basically just goes in like that at the back of each track. So that way you've essentially got four wheels, the soft closer, and the other four wheels on the other side there. So that rolls as a pair. Once it's all fixed up, that'll roll together. Now what I said I'd also show you is these stoppers. You don't need them because they're, they're preset, but basically you just loosen off this little screw and slide it in. That would slide in over your track, and then that gives you room to slide that up and down and position it where you want it. And you can just tighten that up and that acts as a stopper. Now like I said, we don't need this in our setup because it's already been pre-aligned with our soft close mechanism. So I'll take this out and we'll just have them as spares. And the other reason they're not really required in these units as well is because you see the, these rubber buffers in the back of the actual cavity units themselves. Okay, so the next stage is gonna be our installation. But what I need to do first is make sure that the base is completely level and that our sides are level. So I'm just putting a packer down at the base there that the cavity is gonna sit on and the same on this side here. What I wanna do after that is then get a long level across where the two are gonna sit. When I measure out where the end of this unit's gonna be sitting, it's gonna be at about 700 here. So I wanna have a packer right under that end. At the moment, I've just got like a little one mil plastic packer that should just slide under the tiles there. And then I know this cavity is gonna be sitting level and that cavity itself is gonna be sitting level as well. 
Okay, now one thing I'm gonna do at the base of each one of these ones is just drill a hole in the track here and here on both sides, just to help secure it. It's good to have a fixing point at the face here so you can actually get that nice and, and level on the style side as well. All right, now this is the fun part. To try and screw it all together in place, the pan heads will be for the top of the door just because there's enough to do four for each bracket. And before I screw those right off, I'm just gonna slide the other roller in the end of the track before it gets too tight. So these are the countersunk screws on the bottom of the, the unit. So I'm assuming that's gonna be the same up the top. Now to fix these in position, the only thing you really need to make sure is that these styles are both plumb this way and level the other way. Now I've just got to pull it back a little bit that way and I'm going to utilise this hole in the back of the frame here with a batten screw. So it's quite a large hole, so you need 14 gauge batten screw to hold that inside that hole. So I'm going to get some packers behind here just so it doesn't over tighten. Now I'm going to pin this bottom section with a piece of spaghetti down into the concrete and pan head screw, a very flat pan head screw. You don't want it to protrude up that can scuff the bottom of the door. Okay, so when it comes to hanging the doors, you've got this mechanism that basically sits on top of the door and you've got the little screw that attaches to those rollers. All right, so find where your rollers are. You've got the one that's attached to the soft close and the loose one that we put up behind there. It's just a matter of screwing these up into those rollers. So this is where the doors have the routed section out of each top. But the good thing about these doors, they've also got the channel routed out of the bottom. Now the trick with these is to make sure that you have both mechanisms facing the same way. All right, so find where your rollers are. You've got the one that's attached to the soft close and the loose one that we put up behind there. Just a matter of screwing these up into those rollers. And we'll adjust these heights in a minute once we know the height of the door off the ground. Now with the tool provided, you can adjust these to the height that we need to get the distance off the bottom of the door. We want to get it pretty close before we put the door on and then just make some minor adjustments once it's in place. All right, now lastly, the plasterboard. The only thing you really need to remember here is glue it to these little styles here and use screws that aren't any longer than about 25 mil. You've got a 16 mil timber style here and you've got 10 mil plasterboard. The last thing you want is a long screw to go through there. You try and slide the door shut and it scratches the door because you've got a nail or a screw protruding. Before screwing your boards on, you just mark on your timber work here, it's obviously going to be painted, where the center of your styles through here are so you know where to screw. Then a little bit of stud adhesive or glue. Okay, so now I've done my base coat and that's set to reinforce all the joints on the plasterboard. Now next up I'm going to use a finish coat, a topping over it. Okay, now that that's set, I'm gonna start on the architrave and the skirting. So I've just got some 25 mil nails. My architrave and skirting is only 11 thick, so that'll bite in about 15 mil. Next up, we've got our handles and flush pulls. Now I'm gonna situate those halfway up on each door. I'll mark that out and get them installed. Okay, so there you go, that's the doors completed. You can see you've got the handles on there. See the soft clothes working on each side. And then to pull it out, you got the finger pulls on each side. Grab that. So there you go guys, a really nice product from Premium Sliding Doors. Now I'll put a link to their products below because I did notice there's not too many how-to videos on the net for these. So if you do get one of these products, at least you can look this up and hopefully that was a help for you. So if you've enjoyed the video guys, please like or subscribe. Give it a thumbs up and uh, yeah, follow us on our socials and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.